Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to The Next Level Live. My name is Steve Giordano, and uh, today I've been asked to talk about what it takes to be the number one producer at Family First Life, which is an amazing thing to, to try and communicate to everybody. But the one thing I'd say about this company and this industry, and just probably entrepreneurship and business in general, you can really do whatever it is that you want to do. And I'm going to try and give you a roadmap of things that I've done, you know, mistakes that I made and things that didn't work, things that worked that got me to that goal. And the coolest thing about this topic is, let's say you miss the goal, you still might protect seven, eight, nine, you know, a thousand families. You might not be number one, but you might have, you might exceed any goal that you actually had for yourself and do a, have a better year than you did previously. So it's actually a really, really cool topic to talk about and just a really cool goal to go after. So I'm going to take you back because I think it starts with belief. 2019, my um, first full year, I protected about 700 families. I finished number two for the year and Jonathan Porcina, you know, had finished number one, about 750 families. And he just, he crushed it. And I was chasing them all year and, you know, trying to figure out what I could do to be better to, to catch it. Right. So I remember leaving that first convention. And then the other goal that year was, you know, can you protect a thousand families? Cause nobody had done it yet. Right. And now, you know, probably 10 people did it. So you leave that convention and that was like my big macro goal. Be number one, protect a thousand families. Right. So now, as the year goes on, you know what your goal is and you put it, you know, on a chalkboard and I had it somewhere in my office, but I never like focused on that. So what I want to really bring you to is whatever goals you're looking for here, everything is, I have the macro goal, but I got to really focus on the micro goals because the micro goals over and over and over and over again are what add up to it. So a lot of times I think what people do in their goals is they're so focused on what the big lofty number is that they lose track of the minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, week by week that it actually takes to get you there. So when I left that convention, I, I knew from doing this for a year, I knew what it was gonna take from a time investment from a lead investment, from a money investment, from a mental investment and a physical investment, and also an investment from, you know, time from your family and getting them on board with what you were looking to do, right? It, these, are, these are some crazy lofty numbers and goals. And I'm going to walk you through kind of how I navigated the schedule and how I think you should as well. And it's a lot. And honestly, I think probably the hardest part of it is the mental game because obviously in this business you can have your highs and your lows and it's a mental grind a lot of times you know it's, it's not always easy to get told no you know seven out of ten times because sometimes it's every other time you get told no and other times it's, you get seven in a row and then you might get three yeses but that's typically your averages right so the mental fortitude that it takes is really where you need to begin once you figure out what the goal is. Because what ends up happening is you're going through the day by day by day. And sometimes like you start having these successes, successes really start stacking up and you can kind of see, all right, now I'm breaking it down by my week. I'm breaking it down by my month. And now I'm starting to really get momentum and get myself there. But mentally, you have to keep yourself sharp and you have to be able to take the slings and arrows that are gonna come at you because now you're dealing in tremendous, tremendous volume and there's tremendous pressure around what you're doing. But you know what the end game is. So it actually helps you mentally because you understand like, yeah, there's gonna be some bad days. There's gonna be some loss. But if I'm always focused on what the good is and having a few wins in the day, the wins stack up. The other side of this type of a goal is it's got to be an all-in, everyday effort. 
Like, if you can legit 365 be doing something towards your personal production to get yourself to be number one, that stuff is going to start compounding and compounding and compounding. And you're going to start seeing some major monster numbers. But that can be hard because that's a sacrifice of time. You know, for me and my schedule, I've had the same quote unquote traditional FFL schedule for the past four years. Dial Monday, Thursday, a lot of times dialing all day during the day. And a lot of times when I went home at night and then running in the field 12 hours. And then, you know, if I went into last year, mixing in telesales and call transfers into my mix on my dial days. Um, predominantly being in the field because, you know, I'm a creature of habit and I like to meet with people. But I'm also, you know, not an idiot to understand that I need to mix in some call transfers, sometimes doing some virtual stuff if a client can't meet. And then again, that actually helped me in my volume as well because now it became, no, I'm not changing what I do. It became, I'm going to start adding things in. Now, another thing you can do if you are, you know, into year two in the business and you're trying to shoot for this is your book of business. If every single day when you dialed, you basically did three things. You called your new leads and your old leads. You did call transfers in between. And then you called book of business, lapse policies, clients that just whatever fell off or you were never able to get a hold of. If you legit, and I make a list for myself in my phone, every day I probably have 20 clients to call and, and they're somewhere in that realm of what I just went over. And then what ends up happening is when I legit exhaust myself in phone calls all day long, lo and behold, you might get three policies, four policies, five policies from all of those things now working together. <clears throat> and then again, that starts adding up. Then you start getting good at what you do. You've been in a lot of houses. You've seen a lot of clients. You've met with a lot of clients over Zoom. You start getting better. You start getting a higher close ratio. You start asking better questions to get referrals to ensure kids kids IULs, child whole life, and boom, all that stuff starts to add up and snowball. And now you're getting to massive daily numbers, massive weekly numbers, massive, I could be the number one producer in the company numbers, right? Here's another key thing, right? Now we have the ethos platform. Are you, when you don't close a client, sending them when you leave the house, and it's something I just started doing, are you saying to them, this might not be the right time and I might not be the right person, but I'm going to give you this link to this great company ethos. And when the time is right, you can do the entire process yourself and you don't even have to deal with me. So now here's another avenue that we've added, you know, for ourselves and at FFL. And thank you for bringing that to us, everybody. Um, so now I can even sell more and I can be I can run ads with my ethos ad. There's like so many things you can do. You can be issue paying business in your sleep if you legit work it and set it up correctly. So now that actual schedule, right? To run that schedule at that level, week in and week out, number one, to be the number one producer, I have not had a vacation, a flat out vacation since I started here, okay? I could afford one, but I haven't for a lot of reasons because it didn't fit and align with the goals that I had. And I felt that I needed to, for these years, put in that time to get to a certain level, you know, because we, we haven't arrived. We haven't arrived personally. We haven't arrived as a company. We haven't arrived as an agency, right? So are you willing to sacrifice that time and I'm not saying you can't have a vacation, but are you willing to sacrifice, hey, I'm going to maybe put some of that stuff on hold because this is the goal. This is what I want, and I'm going after it. Um, now, maybe you take one. Maybe you take two. But are you crazy intentional on the front side of the vacation and the back side of the vacation? Are you working harder to earn the vacation? 
Are you also actually scheduling your life out correctly? So in stamina to be the number one producer, I've always believed health is wealth. And if you do not take care of you, number one, from what you put in your body and when you get your body up and how much rest you get or don't get, if you don't take care of that, everything else is going to be crazy, crazy hard. Because if you go in the field and you're exhausted because you were hung over the night before, it's going to be hard to sell and, and connect with clients. Just is. So I've always been a big proponent of I'm going to eat right. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to get my mind right, get my body right. And then I'm going to attack, attack, attack every single day even when I don't want to. And the reality is there's a lot of days I don't, but my goal does not care that I don't want to get up and go run an appointment today. It doesn't care. The goal was to be the number one producer. That was the goal. Everything else, you know what? I'm going to have to kind of put it by the wayside to get to that goal. Is that hard? Is that harsh? Yes but it's a hard goal and it's also a challenging goal. And, and the, if it was easy, it wouldn't be rewarding, right? If it was simple, there would be no, you know, enjoyment out of it. It's hard. It's a struggle. It's a grind. And then, oof, you achieve it. And wow, you feel so great because you know how hard it was and you know, as simple as this industry is and this business is, it is it does have its hard you know factors to it right there are so many things you cannot control and that's the other side of it leads you know you have got to not be afraid of spending more money on leads you know i had a trajectory in what i spent started with roughly a thousand now i'm at about 25 and i've been holding steady on that for a while because Again, working the book of business, getting better at what I do, focusing on how I get better at what I do every day and not acting like I know everything because I definitely do not. And then lo and behold, that investment over years actually really, really helps in that book of business because now I have people of all the clients I've sold now in the last you know, four years, about 5,000 clients in the last four years. They all now have me as their go-to. So every week there's one to two to three policies that are sold off of clients that I had prior that I built a relationship with, sold. Maybe we got them something new, something more, something extra, something for the kids, whatever. It, it just starts to really springboard for you. And that is how you take yourself to being the number one producer you got to start to think outside the box. There's, there's a hard work element and there's a grind element that has to be embraced. There's where you have to learn your craft. It doesn't take talent to learn what we do, but it does take investment of time to study in your downtime where you're not running appointments and, and being crazy focused on activity. There's got to be some time for learning, right? Like, I'm not a master of the IUL. I'm not a master of the annuity. I now focus on that to learn it. I talk to people that do it better than me to learn it. And lo and behold, I'm selling some more. And there's some other things on the building side and what have you that I'm learning and I'm reaching out to people that are doing it better than me. So I know this is a lot and I'm throwing a lot at you, but... All of these things are, are like the potion for the explosion of, man, I can be number one, guy or girl. But you have to start this, this process and really, again, focusing on that micro. You know, it's minute by minute. You can map out your day to the T, to the hour, to the minute, and have activity, and then bang, sold the policy. Helped somebody on a call transfer. Met somebody in the field. You know, 
spoke to an old client, and then boom, it just continues to compound. And here's the last thing I'll say. Probably the biggest key of all of this is when you absolutely are drained, you don't have any more left to give, and you feel like you've given it everything you've got for the day, do one more thing. Call one more person, and I promise you, I don't care where you end up, what number you end up doesn't matter. If you always have that mentality, good things are going to happen because you're doing more than the guy or girl next to you or in your area or whatever are doing. You're doing one more call. You're knocking on one more door. You're taking one more call transfer. And do it when you're exhausted. Because when you do that, it actually shows the level of commitment you have to the goal and that you really, really want it. If everybody does these things when it's easy, they'll never get to greatness. But if you do them when they're crazy hard and crazy difficult, you will. Because that's truly what quote unquote greatness looks like in this industry. It's people that go that extra mile. They spend that extra money on leads. They go to that extra house. They door knock on that Saturday when they want to go home and lay by the pool. That is the difference. And what's so cool about the industry is you can really make a name for yourself. You can really set yourself apart. And you can really set your family up financially just by doing a little bit extra. The reality is we live right now in a time where people don't do extra. They don't. So if you are the one today that makes the decision that you're going to do extra, you are going to dominate because the environment is weak. If the environment is weak and you are strong, you will dominate the environment. And that's why so many people think right now is the worst time in the country's history. It's actually the best time. It's all dependent on how you look at it. So again, recapping a little bit, what it takes to be the top producer, schedule, discipline, focus 150% on that goal, letting nothing stand in your way. Excuses, do not care about your goal. So get rid of the excuses. Show up, get better, learn, give it every ounce that you have in your soul and you can get to that level. And again, even if you felt short and weren't number one, you might double your production from what you did a year ago. You might go from being a 200 family producer to bang, you're a Hall of Fame producer or you are a Hall of Fame producer, bang, 600. Everybody in this company should be pushing to do more. And if they did that, They'd get themselves closer to number one, and more importantly, they would help and protect more people, and they would really, really set themselves up for a tremendous life with their families because they did a little bit more. So I hope this helps. It's an honor, as always, to be on here. Have a tremendous afternoon.